The following contest is a second round match in the Kings of Consoles tournament to determine the greatest game in the history of the Nintendo Entertainment System. Two games enter, only one can advance. Introducing first, the 60th seed, a 1990 run and gun game from Konami, Super C! And it's a pump. The fifth seed, a 1990 action platformer from Konami, Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse. Your ringside judges are Ricky Giraldo and Pat Dooley. There's nothing left to say but round two, fight! <laughs> Welcome to episode 46 of Kings of Consoles. This is the podcast where we're trying to find the best game for each home video game console by means of giant tournaments. Uh, you have caught us. This is our 10th round two matchup uh, in our Nintendo Entertainment System tournament, where we will see the number five overall seed, Castlevania Three: Dracula's Curse, as it takes on number 60, Super C. I'm Pat Dooley. And I'm Ricky Geraldo. And we have played, this is our third straight week of playing Castlevania games as we uh, kick off the new year with the Nintendo All-Stars. We've already visited with Kirby and we've been hanging out with the Belmont clan for uh, for the last three weeks. Uh, I'm a little bummed to see uh, see this run come to an end, but I uh, feel like we're, we're definitely ending it on a high note. Uh, but yeah. first, first, we do always talk about the underdog, uh, which in this case is the number 60 seed Super C. Uh, which is a 1990 run and gun game from Konami. It is the sequel to Contra. Uh, and we played it 19 weeks ago when it beat Tecmo World Wrestling uh, in our 27th episode. If you want more details about the publisher and the history of the game, you can check out episode 27. We're just going to kind of dive right into it uh, because we did already kind of speak about it in depth uh, in that episode. Uh, but the question we've been asking here in round two did your opinion change at all uh, on Super C since uh, episode twenty-seven? Uh, not really, man. I think, I think, like we were talking before the pod, I think it got really lucky mm-hmm. in the first round, and yeah. now, unfortunately, I played this after I played the next game we're going to talk about. <laughs> oh man, Castlevania, and yeah, this game was not that good. <laughs> Doesn't hold up, no. No. Um. Yeah, it's, it's, and I feel like we, 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 this is well trod ground uh, after our last discussion about it, but it just, it's, it's the sequel to Contra. It tries to kind of one up Contra, but the one thing that made Contra enjoyable, well, I mean, it was a good game in general, but the thing that made it possible to play for long periods of time without wanting to throw your controller across the room was the Konami code. Uh, right. Being able to have, you know, 30 lives at a time and then continues um, doesn't work in Super C. And nope. uh, when you die three times, which happens a lot because it's the sequel to Contra, you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the game and rappel down from that helicopter again and shoot those same guards again and dodge those same grenades again and blow up that helicopter again over and yes. over and over and over again <laughs> and like once you die you have to start all over again uh-huh. it's yep. just yeah it 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 got like you said it got lucky in round one I, I'm I'm still bummed that like for example this made it and Tecmo Super Bowl didn't, um, you know that especially Tecmo Super Bowl that's my number one biggest that should have advanced, but I mean I would have put yeah I probably would have put Duck Hunt over this I would have put Mega Man Six over this I would have put <laughs> uh, yeah 
Spy Hunter, Dragon Warrior 3. You know, a lot of good games went down in round one. And even not, oh, like Little Nemo would have totally beat this. Yeah. A lot of good games didn't make it out of the first round, but this one didn't. Um, so that's a bummer. But, um, and we'll get into later how far we made it this time. I did make it slightly farther this time, I think. I don't quite remember how far I made it last time, but I feel like... I, you know what's funny? I didn't make it as far as I did last time. Oh, yeah? Time. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like... I was like, wow. I got to a point in this one where I was like, oh, I, I don't remember this um, from last time. So it's possible I just didn't remember it and I did play it last time. Um, but okay, so maybe uh, maybe I will make up some ground in the Who Made It Farther segment. Um, yeah. But honestly, I don't really have that much to say about it. It's just really, really hard, really, really frustrating. It's a good little you know run and gunner, but... The fact that you just, limited lives, limited continues, yeah. just sucks a lot of the fun out of it. And it's just weird because I, I I feel like Contra is way different than this. Maybe I mean we haven't played the original Contra yet, so I don't know. Yeah, I feel like this is a little more. I if memory serves, Contra the the enemies were a little more alien, and it was a little more kind of otherworldly, whereas this was just kind of another. Rambo game yeah hey it was another you know Akari Warriors or Jackal or Russian Attack or Bionic Commando <laughs> or any yeah. number of other games we've played where you're just running around and shooting soldiers in different colored uniforms than you um yeah I mean I for sure remember that the bosses in Contra were much more alien looking uh than the ones in this but Oh, well. Yeah. Um, so this is a very, eh, a super C type of game. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not, definitely not a super B. It's, it's better than a super D. It's just a, it's a, it's a super C. It's a super C. Yeah. It's, it's good, but uh, <laughs> the worst game <laughs> to go up against, let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> For sure. Uh, yeah, and that game is the number. It's the number five. Like this is the first of our 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 um, our rounds playing a top five game uh, in the tournament. Uh, Castlevania Three: Dracula's Curse is also from Konami, also from 1990. Uh, it is a prequel to the first two Castlevanias, focusing on Simon Belmont's ancestor Trevor, whose family has been exiled mm -hmm. due to their superhuman powers. But Trevor is called back to assist the people of Wallachia when Dracula begins his reign of terror. Trevor can be joined by three different sidekicks, which the player can toggle between using the select button, the sorceress Sifa Benaldes, pirate Grant Dynasty, and Alucard, the son of Dracula yeah. himself. The game has branching narratives, including four different endings, depending on which companion Trevor brings with him to the end of the game, if any. Uh, but it does go back to the more traditional platforming of the first game, abandoning the RPG elements of the second. Uh, it was re-released for PC in 2002, the Wii Virtual Console in 2009, the 3DS and Wii U Virtual Consoles in 2014, as part of the Castlevania Anniversary Collection for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Switch in 2019. In 1997, EGM called it the 57th best game ever made. Nintendo Power called it the ninth best game for the NES. Games Radar called it the eighth best game for the NES. And of course, IGN has it fifth, hence its ranking on our list. So this is basically just an all-timer. Like every, is, every yeah. game critic ever considers Castlevania three to be one of the greatest games ever made. And after spending two hours with it this week, I, 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 no complaints <laughs> you, yeah, I, you will I, not I, hear me argue any of those so before we started the pod i texted uh you pat i was like there's a game i want to play right now <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. i'm trying so hard not to play and it's this game yeah i love it i it's, it's everything so i wanted good. the complaints i had about castlevania 2 gone God. that is slow it <laughs> as platformy as the first one yep it was just oh my god chef kiss uh, it was just, <laughs> like this yeah. is, this this game is why i feel uh 
Castlevania is the game it is today. I yeah. really do feel like this is the one that made it super, you know? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, this, I mean, most of my notes were along the lines of, oh, this is great. Oh, this music is great. Um, oh, my God, this the is music. A, oh. a nice mix <laughs> of the first two games. The graphics are great. Like, the level where you're in the, like, the church with the stained glass, that level is yes. beautiful. Yeah. Like, that's just gorgeous animation in 8 bits. Like, the, the Nintendo shouldn't be able to do that yet. Like, that's, <laughs> that's the kind of thing you see in a Super in a Super Nintendo or a Genesis game. But it was... In 1990, they were doing that with 8 bits. It's just... It's a gorgeous game. It plays so well. Um, I did... Um, <laughs> I will... I did think at one point that I had beat the game... Uh, but because I didn't do any of this research before I started playing, that was when I found out about Alucard. Was, oh yeah, <laughs> when I beat him, yeah. I was like, "Oh, I'm 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 Dracula's son. I will join you to destroy him." It's like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, he did. Cool. And that's another thing. It didn't look like Alucard. Alucard. Yeah, right. Alucard yeah, the way we know it now. And, yeah. You know, and that, that's another thing I loved. I was like, I did not remember that this game was the first time. You're introduced to Alucard, so I remember I when, you know, you beat him and stuff. I was very surprised. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's um, and the intro of this game. Oh my god, that intro song. Yes, I remember I was I was playing it and my girlfriend was listening and she's like, "What is that?" And she was like, <laughs> "What a banger!" It was yeah. so good. Yeah, it it slaps. It's so uh, yeah, I, I really. I I have no notes. Like I mean I have a lot of notes, but I mean in the in the the uh, the way that that people say I have no notes. I have no notes. This game is about as perfect as it can be. It's what exactly what you want out of a Castlevania game. Uh, it's hard but not obnoxiously so. Like there's nothing in this game on the level of the Frankenstein's monkey fight. Uh, in the first no. one, um, no. nothing nearly that frustrating. They took out yeah, the, the pretty... RPG elements, so there's no, you know, headbutt Dolores Cliff or whatever that, you know, those weird, cryptic, badly translated messages you would get in the second one. There was nothing like that. It was just a straightforward action platformer beating up zombies with a whip. Just super fun. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm pretty sure the Netflix series, like season two, is based off this. Oh, really? Yeah, Interesting. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I've still never gotten because around to, to watching that. It's really good because it has all the card and it introduces uh, the spirit ghost lady. Uh, I forget her name. Sifa? Well, Sifa, yeah. Well, I think it's great. Yeah. if I remember right, isn't Sifa? Don't Trevor and Sifa get together, and then like the Belmont lineage from then, like she's like Simon's grandmother or something. I, I don't remember yeah. exactly how the family tree works out, but that makes sense. That actually does make sense. I I gotta watch it. It's been a while, but yeah, I don't think you're Simon Belmont. Okay. Or in the show, I don't think it's Simon Belmont. Okay. Yeah, I uh, that's that's been in my like my list on Netflix for years, and I've just never gotten around to actually watching it. Um, which is you just should. that's it's entirely really my fault. Um, I yeah. just I need to just sit down and carve out the time. There's just so much good content out there, and I don't know, like anime has never really been your thing. I think that's also so, true. Yeah, that's also true. But. Anyway, back to Castlevania three. Like that's a that's a sheer sign that we don't have a whole lot to talk about. This just this game is just so good. Yeah, guys. All like, we would be saying is just over and over. Oh, it's good. It's good. I liked this. I liked this. I liked this. I liked this. Um, one thing I did find to be a bit of a bummer was they they nerfed my favorite weapon from the first one, the stopwatch. Um, I didn't feel like it was oh, nearly yeah. as powerful this time around. But the like the cross daggers that you liked. Are still really good. Heck yeah, um, man! But that's the thing. There, I didn't feel like there was a lot of bosses. There no. was, but there wasn't. 
Right. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree with that. Um, there's definitely less, which is why I was like, wait, am I at Dracula already when I made it to Alucard? Yeah. Um, who was in like level five or six. So he's about like, you know, where he's some games way. would end. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe, maybe this is actually the end. And I just took, because you can like branch off and decide which direction you want to go. Um, like, oh, well, maybe I just took the shorter way and here's Dracula already. Um, and I didn't even need to get his rib or his eyeball or whatever other stuff he had to get in two. Um, but yeah, no, it's just, it's really, 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 really good. Um, and I really pity um, Baseball Stars or Jackal, uh, whichever game will face it in round three. Uh, I do realize oh, yeah. <laughs> that I said last week that um, it was going to be uh, Baseball Stars or Jackal. I had it put in wrong. I was looking at the Castlevania 3 part of the bracket, not Castlevania 2. Castlevania 2, after winning last week, will face the winner between Dragon Warrior and Rad Racer uh, in round three, which is much stiffer competition than what Castlevania 3 will face probably. Um, although, to be fair, I've never played Baseball Stars. Maybe it's great. Um, it might be. Might be. Remember, I beat Rad Racer, so I don't know how much more I can play it. But That's we'll true. <laughs> that is true. I did not beat Rad Racer, so I will be attempting to do so this time. Um, yeah, I mean, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, have Rhino take it away because I think I think we're about ready to get into some some spoilery discussions on how far we made it. All right, so Super C, um, I made it to the mini, or I made it past, just past the mini boss in area three, um, which is like the second side scrolling area. Um, Cause like area two is the first like overhead, like Bionic Commando, Rygar, those levels. Um, made it through that and then I thought I had beat area three because I beat this like walker thing that you have to like you can jump on top of it but you have to like be on either side of it to shoot it um I beat that and then I made it a little bit well I I stopped playing because I thought oh okay well I'm done with that level and then just nothing happened like oh okay so I, <laughs> I kept walking it was like oh the level continues um I made it a little past that when, uh, and then I died and had to start all the way over um, again for I, God knows how many times. Yeah, I only made it to like the boss that was in the ceiling. I don't know if you ever got to that. I honestly, I didn't really ceiling. care. This it was like a, it was like just a bunch of like lasers falling down from the ceiling. Okay, yeah, this is sorry. Yeah, I'm on. Contra.fandom.com. Um, that is the stage five boss. Gotcha. The zero gra the bone structured zero gravity warship Jiralal. Okay. I don't know how they get the names, but yeah, here know. we go. <laughs> it's probably in the instruction manual. Probably. Okay, yeah, so it's just like it's made like basically it looks like it's a spaceship made out of skulls, which is about the most NES boss I can think of. Um, so yeah, you still beat me by like two and a half levels. <laughs> so, Trust, I didn't want to. Trust me. <laughs> I didn't want to. The lead expands to five. You're at 41 to my 36. Well, so let's see how far Castlevania you got. Castlevania three. Uh, I made it to level six three, um, where you're fighting the like a series of those like snake skeleton things. Um, hmm. They I went down. It, it's hard to to judge because there are branching paths, right? So I went down 
I feel like I just kept going down just for consistency's sake. Did you get more than one companion? I only got Alucard. Okay, so I don't know how we're going to judge this. So the last thing I did was the Alucard fight. But okay. I was already using uh, what's your name? Okay. So I already fought her boss and got her. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can find a like a branching map and then we can see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we were if you made it to the courtyard, but you didn't make it into the castle. I did not. No. Okay. We were both in the last level in our branch before you go in the castle. That's so, crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> I was I was in so the you... I was in the mines, the abandoned mines under the castle. So the next thing to do, once I beat that level, I would have been in the main hall. Once you had cleared the, the courtyard, you would have been in the main hall. So do you not do you in your path do you not get uh No, I only the... ever saw Alucard. You did not get the girl later? Nope. Wow. Uh, uh, not that I can tell. Let me look and see. Let me go back to that one that actually listed. Supposedly, Grant is available in the path I chose, but I never saw him, so I don't know what level he shows up in. Hmm. Yeah. Just Alucard. All right. So yeah, six, three, no, no, yeah. That's totally where I was. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so that is another tie. So you maintain your five game lead. <laughs> oh, dang. Yeah, I'll make it up. I'll catch up somehow. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's a, kind of a formality at this point, but we do have to actually pick a winner. Um, and our audience uh, got a pretty good turnout this time. 78% uh, of the vote went to Castlevania 3. Um, and I kind of suspect 100% of our votes are going there. It certainly got mine. Yeah, yeah. Castlevania three all the way. He's, he's... Yeah, that's the that's the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. This one, we, this one's gonna be a little hard to beat. So I'm yeah. gonna be interested when it actually has a game that would uh, rival yeah. it. Yeah. Well, we'll see if Baseball Stars or Jackal is that game uh, when round three rolls around. But Let's see, Baseball Stars might be really good. So. It might be. It might be. Well, yeah. But what is this like? one of the best games of all time so <laughs> yeah i mean yeah right, it's we'll the see. number five according to ign number eight according to games radar number nine according to nintendo power and egm called it the 57th best game ever uh, of course that was back in 1997 but still it's a really 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 good game um so yeah so before we start to wrap it up we do have a little bit of listener feedback uh, in reaction to, uh, as mentioned on last week's episode, uh, we did tweet the photo of the cover of the second issue of Nintendo Power. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, Medic Sloan reached out on Twitter and reacted saying, guess I'm sleeping with the lights on from now on. Um, and uh, our old pal Ryan O came on in with a great uh, Castlevania themed question. Which universal horror creature monster do you find to be the most terrifying? Follow-up question, which one would make a more difficult boss in a video game? Um, I feel like in all actuality, like vampires would be the scariest, but they've been so watered down by right twilight and underworld and you know various you know parodies and all the you know whatever the originals and vampire diaries and like there's the vampires don't have that kind of like menace anymore 
uh, like they used to. But they are still terrifying if you think about like, oh yeah, they, so, they drink people's yeah. blood and yeah. <laughs> I think the scariest universal monster I think Fan of the Opera. Right? Is Ooh, that that's one? a good one. Yeah, I think I think so. he's pretty terrifying in the in that version. Yeah. The yeah, like the the old the, like the silent one. Yeah. Um, that one is freaks me out. Really scary. I but was kind of leaning toward yeah. Creature from the Black Lagoon, but yes. I think you might uh, be right with the Phantom. So the, I would say Creature of the Black Lagoon as like a boss monster at for Castlevania. Yeah, and you know what would make it even I, worse? It'd have to the be water, water level. level. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. That's why I picked it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a water level, and you know, those are terrible. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe let, let, let's say that's my answer for both: is the creature from the Black Lagoon is the scariest, but also would be the hardest boss. They uh, really need to bring that movie back. Like, I feel like they do. You could have a because well, you the know, best creature design, such a cool yeah. design. Yeah, well, you know the whole story about that, right? About how they tried to get it off the ground like five oh. years or so ago. Yeah, Guillermo del Toro was supposed to make a creature from the Black Lagoon movie. Um, like they were in pre-production and everything they had a script and then Universal backed out and Del Toro was like well I still want to make my fish monster movie and instead made the shape of water and yep, won an Oscar that, for best picture <laughs> yeah I was gonna say and he won an Oscar yeah so <laughs> screw you Universal oh, wow. I'm gonna go off and make my own thing but yeah that was originally supposed to be a creature from the Black Lagoon remake as part of the like Tom Cruise mummy and what Dracula untold oh, or whatever yeah, that one yeah. was. Like it was supposed to be part of that dark universe they were trying to make. Um, right. And then they just kind of pulled the plug on that. But Del Toro was already so far into his creature movie, he decided to just turn it into Shape of Water. So good for you, GDT. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, this was a, honestly, this was a pretty easy episode to get through. Like that was just a blast to play that game for two hours. And, uh, and I'm excited to play it for another two or another hour when, uh, when the time comes, uh, I'm not sure exactly when that episode will happen, but the cool thing about as we get further into the tournament is there's just less and less time between rounds now. Um, but yeah, you can see the full bracket, uh, including, if you're listening on release day, you can see that Castlevania two advanced. We do always update uh, our bracket at challenge.com slash Kings of consoles with the previous week's results. Uh, So you can see everything up through episode 45 on the bracket. Now Um, Castlevania three will get moved ahead when next week's episode comes out. Uh, Speaking of which next week's episode is the number 11 seed final fantasy taking on number 54 ghosts and goblins. Uh, you can uh, contribute to the show financially, ko-fi.com slash kings of consoles. Uh, you can watch a stream on twitch.tv slash kings of consoles. Uh, you can like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash kings of consoles. Uh, we are at kings of consoles on Twitter. I'm personally at loopy date. Here I'm uh, Ricky G. And- uh, you can also email us, kingsofconsolespod at gmail.com. As you heard from before with Medic Sloan and Ryan O, we do, you know, we, we do read all of the feedback we get, uh, and uh, it almost all makes it to the air. So uh, reach out yeah. and let us know what you think of the show. Uh, also, this is something I always forget to plug, and I need to just add it to the uh, show notes going forward. Uh, rate, review, subscribe on whatever podcast app you're using to uh, listen because that does help, you know, with, you know, whatever magic algorithm it is that, uh, <laughs> that boosts us up search it's results, tough. uh, that helps, uh, it helps a lot. So, uh, just pop in, even if, you know, it's a one, one line review of it's funny, or I like excite bike or whatever. Um, you, you can do that, uh, you know, Apple podcasts, uh, Google podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, whatever whatever app you're using to listen, uh, Podbean, iHeartRadio, just uh, leave us a little note. Uh, let us know uh, what you think of the show. Uh, but those ratings are, are very, very important. 
uh, especially for shows that are still, uh, you know, looking for, looking to get sponsored, looking to uh, maybe eventually monetize the show. Uh, so yeah, let uh, let people out there know that uh, that you like the show. Uh, yeah, I think that's about all I've got. Uh, Ricky, you have anything else before we uh, before we say bye for the week and uh, get ready for next week's uh, fantasy encounter palooza? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Just play old games. Play old games. We'll see you next week. Kings of Consoles is recorded in Nashville and Orlando and is produced and edited by me, Ed Uli. Thanks to Captain Portal for our theme song, intro for a non-existent video game, which can be found at freemusicarchive.org. And the music and sound effects from this week's games can be found by a quick Google search. The opinions expressed in this and every episode are our own, and we are in no way sponsored by or affiliated with Nintendo. We're just big fans.